Hi there once again and welcome to another Expresso Mechanic tutorial. And this is going to be the first in a two-part series in which we're going to be looking at aerodynamics within Cinema 4D. Our first tutorial, what we're going to be focused on here is building our planes. And we've got three different ones actually. There's a glider, a dart and a prototype. So we're going to be building those and we're going to be working out what we need to do with their aerodynamics in order to get them to function properly. And then the second part of the tutorial we'll be looking at building this catapult here and we can control the angle uh, at which we launch our planes. And we've got the user data in there to actually handle that. So that's what we're going to be doing in the first part, in this first tutorial. In the second tutorial we'll build the expression that controls these marker flags which are placed where the planes land. So that's what we're going to be focused on there and that will be a real world example of using the try accept method in Python. We're going to be using that there so it will be, give us a real scenario for where we can use that. If you've done my previous tutorial on try accept which was a Python bytes tutorial then part two of this series will certainly be worth tuning into. Okay so that's what we're going to be about in our first tutorial. So without further ado, let's see if we can make this happen. We'll start by bringing in a cube, make it five along its X axis, 100 along the Y and 1000 along the Z. Hit H so that we can see it. And our X and Y segments we can leave at one the Z will set to 10. So they're set up and we've got the display in garage shading lines so that we can see what we're doing. Now ultimately we need three planes so we'll copy this one and we'll just make these other two disappear so that we can work with the first one. We'll make it editable and we need to select this top row of polygons. So we'll select this one, hold down the shift key, that's not the one I want, I want the top row. We're in polygon mode already so we'll, we can just do that, just want the top one. If I can get it, let's just get a little bit closer. Oh, we want actually in the selection tool I think I've got a problem because I, yes I need visible only checked. If I select the top one, select this N1, hit U, UL for loop selection and Stopper selections must be checked, so please, if you haven't got that checked, make sure you do. Hold down the shift key and select the rest of the row. We can then hit D for extrude once again, and five is what we need to do. So we're set up and ready to create the wings. F3 to change our view to the right hand view. Once again the selection tool and this time I need visible only checked off and I can select what I've got here and here. Just the top two, that's what I want. I've got to make sure I haven't got the top ones as well. Let's just get a little bit closer so that we can see. And no, the top polygons are not selected so that's okay. D for extrude and this time it will be 500. And we've got our wings. That looks good. That looks certainly just, yeah, it, it doesn't look out of proportion. That looks good. The next thing to do is create the tail fins. So we'll do that next if we switch once again to our right hand view. So F3 once again. And we'll just select these two D for extrude, and this time 150. And that gives us our tail fins there, our, our tail, tail plane. And we just need to put this up right in. So I'll switch to my top view this time. So F2 and once again, visible only in the selection tool needs to be checked on. And I can just select this polygon here. D for extrude and let's try 100. Could go a little bit further. I think we'll go 150 with that too, actually. Yeah, that looks all right. I think that'll work nicely. Now the next thing we can worry about is putting some dihedral on the wings and a little bit on the tail plane as well. So what we'll do is switch back to our right hand view, so F3 once again, and select 
with visible only checked off these two and these two and then by I will simply put a bit of dihedral on these wings so we can bring them up to somewhere around there that just gives us a, a, that bit of dihedral there and I'll do the same with the tail f3 once again select these two and let's bring them up so they're somewhere level with the wings if we just bring them sort of actually let's just look at it in the 3d view it may not need to be level with the wings I no, we let's just I'll, I'll tell you what I will do f4 to go into the front view and I'll, I'll let, line them up this way so we want those somewhere there I think that'll be fine that matches up nicely so there you have it that's the formula for making the glider that's what you need to do so we'll make that one disappear and bring in our next one now I'm going to make this one into a dart I'll speed the process up a little bit here I think by editing and just basically show you what I've done so but once again we'll make this editable it's the same rule we need to select this top row of polygons so in our selection tool make sure visible only is checked on select this one this one UL hold down the shift key I'll get a bit closer actually so that it makes life a little bit easier to, with the selection hold down the shift key select that D for extrude 5 and we're ready to start building the wings and by the power of editing I'll get this all done and then show you the result okay so that's the dart fashioned now all I've done here the I selected the polygons on both sides and extruded them out 400 and then the rest of it was just switching to point mode and just manipulating them into position until I'd fashioned the wings in a way that was pleasing on the eye so it's got a nice curve running through here and the same thing here just curves nicely back to here and that gives us a good wing area just to finish it off there's a couple of things to do which is to firstly select these pair of points here if we just switch to our top view we can see what we're doing we can just drag these back just slightly so that they're in the correct position and that just finishes it off there and we don't really need to do much else I think we can probably let's just get a little bit closer we might just need to raise them slightly but not much I mean we can you know they, they do need to to be downwards there's no doubt about it because if we bring them up too much we're going to cause a problem we just need that slight drop on them so that they've got that curve so that's the kind of thing that we need that looks fine I mean that's going to work that's going to work okay for us it will give us a, a really really nice result with the dart so that's fine that's the dart complete and the next one is the prototype so we'll take a look at that let's just make this disappear and we'll do the same thing again it's going to be exactly the same rule I'm simply going to select the top row polygons extrude 5 and then what I'll use is the matrix extrude so that I can make the circular shapes for them that's how I'm going to do that so once again I'll come back when I've done it just to show you what I'm doing with the matrix extrude I've got it set up as follows I've got the steps to 18 we've got 20 in the Z axis for the move rotation just 10 degrees along the X axis and our scale is 100% everywhere so it's it's no there's no change in scale okay variation we've got none so that's all I've done there now to finish this off what I'm going to do is use the bridge tool so MB for bridge and then all I need to do is this and that just finishes it off okay so that's the first wing done I'll come back shortly with the details for the second wing right okay so the only thing I've really changed in the matrix extrude is the size here so the move in the z-axis I've changed it from 20 to 30 I've left everything the same other than that and once again MB for bridge and I'll finish it off and that's it that's the prototype complete that's what you need to make if you're going to build one of these 
Okay, superb. So we've got all of our planes built. We can bring them back and we'll just space them out so that we can see each one of them individually. And they all look really quite nice. Let's just go back into model mode. Yeah, they're all looking quite nice, as I say. Hit H so that we can see them. And there they are. Okay, great. So the next thing we can think about then is setting up their dynamics and actually making them fly. And that will be our next port of call. Before we get there, though, let's just rename them. So this will be glider. This will be Dart and Cube 2 prototype. And we can rearrange them. So we've got glider. We'll just put this at the top, this second, and this will be third. So let's just swap these over. Just put those there. So that's fine. Glider dart prototype it doesn't really matter that much but it will we'll just do it now we'll select all of these and give them bullet tags and they will be rigid bodies so in our glider first let's just start playing around in here and see what we come up with in our collision we'll make it a convex hull in the shape none in the inherit tag and off in the individual elements Everything else we can pretty much leave the same. We don't really need to worry too much. Maybe we'll experiment with the friction a little bit later. In our mass, we can leave it at world density, but we do want to use a custom center. Now, I wish that we could actually see this custom center, but we can't. If we just make these two disappear for now, or rather not the glider, the prototype and the, the dart. So we've just got the glider. Now, if we switch to our right hand view, we can see what's going on a little bit better in here. Now, our mass, we said we, we were going to use a, a custom center. I'm going to make this minus 30 in the Y and minus 90 in the Z. So what we're getting here, if we look at where we are, we're actually going to move this minus 90, which is minus, well, it will be minus 90, it will be here somewhere, because this is 100. Each of these squares is 100, because our plane is 1,000 in length. So minus 90 is going to be somewhere here in the Z. Minus 30, we're, they're 100 high. So it's going to be somewhere here and somewhere here. So around this point, that's where we've effectively moved that to, according to this. But as I say, we can't actually see it and there's no way that we can see it. So I hope eventually Maxon may actually allow us to do that. So if you're listening, Maxon. But anyway, for now, we've set it up like that. Now, let's see if we go into our collision here and we say, uh, where are we? So that's not what we want. I think it's in dynamics. Let's have a look. Ah, yes, custom initial velocity. That's what we want. So in our Z, I'm going to make this minus 3,500. And let's just see what happens when we play the timeline. So it does actually work. It does actually work. And it's moving quite nicely, but it's not quite right. So what we need to do in actual fact is play around with our axis here. So again, I'm going to switch to my right hand view. Now, if I move this closer to the wings, let's see what happens now. We're still getting the similar result, aren't we? So let's move it a little bit closer in and see what happens now. It's still the same. So it's not making too much difference at the moment, but I know that it will. This can behave like a fine tune for us. And if we, if we just change this to 
a moving mesh. And now let's see what we get now. We're still getting the same result, which is interesting. And the reason for that is because we haven't played around with our forces. So if we add some lift here and we say one degree of drag and we also check double sided, let's see what we get now. Now we're getting a different result. And we can see that our moving mesh is behaving in a bit of a strange way. Now let's just go back into our dynamics here and into our collision. And if we change the moving mesh to a convex hull, let's see what we get now. So we're getting a different result there, aren't we? We're getting more akin to what we were getting before. Let's just pull this back slightly and now see what we get. And now we can see we're getting a slightly different result because the plane is tipping back slightly. Now that's interesting. Yeah, that's giving us quite a nice result there. And I think we can probably use that for now. So as I said, we can use this as a kind of a fine tuning control. Yes, we can use a custom center in our mass tab here and leave the world density alone. That's all good, and we can adjust the Y and Z parameters. But if we use our axes as a custom fine tune, we can we can create different results. Let's pull this back here and see what happens. And now we can see that it tips over. So this is certainly having a profound effect on what we're doing here. So I'm going to push this somewhere near the wings, just behind the wings, and we'll leave it at that for now because that's giving us quite a pleasant result, I think. So yeah, that's the setup for the glider. Let's switch the glider off and we'll disable its dynamics for now. And we'll work with the dart. And let's see what we're getting here. So again, we'll come into the dynamics tab, set trigger to immediately and leave everything else the same. In our collision, We'll make it again a convex hull. We'll say, let's have a look, see where we are. Yep, the bounce, the friction. Yep, we can leave those as they are. We'll switch inherit tag to none because there are no children, individual elements to off, and everything else is pretty much okay there. In our mass, let's again use a custom center and we'll see where we are here. So let's see what our dart is doing. So we've got the axes currently in the center and I think we'll leave them there for the moment. We've got this to set up again. So our center again, let's just go the same as as we did before. We'll go minus minus 30 and minus 90 for now. So that gives us the same sort of setup. Let's see what we've got in our forces. Again, we want some lift and some drag and we want two sided. So we'll check that first. Our lift will make 30 and drag one. And let's see what happens now when we run this. So we're getting it just drop because of course we're not actually using what we need to use here. We need a custom initial velocity in here. Again, we'll make this minus 3,500. And let's see what we get. Just bring this over here. Let's just hit this and see what we get. And we're getting a similar sort of result, aren't we? So again, what we need to do here with our darts axes is just pull these back from center slightly. Let's well, let's take them. Let's take them back a little bit further than we did with the uh, with the glider. And let's see what happens now. So yeah, we're not quite getting what we want there at the moment. Let's just take this back to here. And it's almost flying straight now, but it's flying in a really pleasant way. I mean, that's that's really flying in a pleasant way. It's staying pretty much level. So I think we can probably leave that as it is for now. Just hit O for object so that we can see that and just zoom out again. Yeah, I mean, I'm liking that. And I, I think that that's working quite nicely. Let's just see what we've got. Yeah, I've, I've moved the axes just don't want them there, I want them somewhere there. And we want them in the center. Let's just go into our object here, coordinates. 
let's just center these out so make this zero on the x well we can't of course it doesn't allow you to do that does it which is very annoying let's just go into our front view just level that up it's somewhere there okay let's see where we are yep it looks as if it yeah that's working that's working as I wanted to so that I think is going to be okay as a starting point for our dart yeah I'm gonna go with that we can always adjust afterwards so again we'll switch off our dynamics so disable those and make the dart disappear and now we'll bring in the prototype great let's see what we've got here so again let's switch the dynamics to none for the inherit tag none for the individual elements or off for the individual elements the shape make it a convex hull leave all this the same in our mass we'll make it so that we've got a custom center again we'll make it minus 30 minus 90 as a starting point forces 1% drag 30% lift I think there two-sided and let's see where we are in our dynamics we want a custom initial velocity and minus 3500 in our y or rather our z axis let's fire this up and see what happens yeah and that's even that's working quite nicely but what we'll do again with our axes here we'll just pull them back and let's see what we get now yeah so it's it's not working too badly i don't think there's a little bit of a stall in it but yeah i mean that that is not a bad starting point i think we'll leave it at that now we don't need to actually use custom initial velocity ultimately it's just something that we've put in there to actually throw these forward and actually see what they're doing so we will switch off the custom initial velocity in there we'll go into here make it well we don't really need to make it enable but we we can switch it off in there and the same in here we'll switch that off now the prototype and the dart I'm going to actually disable the pair of those but I'm going to bring the glider back on and make it visible again because we're going to start by using the glider that's going to be a starting point for us At the moment it's doing nothing because of course we've got no custom initial velocity and that's fine so we've set up our dynamics that's the important thing we've got them set up and we know that these planes will actually fly when they've got some velocity along their z-axis in a minus direction now in order to create that initial velocity we're going to be using a catapult but we haven't built that yet and that's going to be our next port of call initially i'll make the planes invisible that's fine and we're ready to go from here we'll bring in a null object and our null will rotate through 180 degrees in exact in its x-axis that's fantastic and we can call this catapult we'll bring in a cube and this will be our catapult so we'll drop the cube into here make the cube 200 in the x is fine 100 in the height ultimately but we'll make it 50 in the height initially and we'll make it 3900 in its z-axis we'll also give it three 
segments along the Y, or rather along its X axis. And that's our initial shape for our catapult. We'll just hit O for object so that we can see it properly. Moving on from here, we'll hit C to make it editable and switch to polygon mode. And we can select, well, in fact, what I'll do, UL for loop selection. I'll select this and then what I'm going to do is make it smaller. So let's just in the in the X, just tighten this up in the X without the axes selected. Let's just do this just to make this tighter. OK, and let's see what we've got. We want to take this down to about 10 somewhere. Somewhere there will be OK. Just 10 down here, 10 point eight six seven it says but that's fine the next we can the next thing we can do is just select the top polygon here and this one here and then hit d for extrude and extrude 50. oops wrong not good let's just switch on visible only let's go back a few steps visible only select this select this d for extrude and now we should be OK. And we are. And that's fine. So that's the shape of our catapult. And we can see that our plane is going to fit between these two here into this groove and slide along it when we launch it. So that's fine. So that's done. The next thing we can do, let's have a check, see where we are. If we've got catapult there, if we move our cube, let's see where we are. Just go into here, go into model mode again. We want to move our cube along its Z axis and it wants to go minus it's 3900 divided by two. No, that's not right. That's in the wrong axis. I want to go in the, in the Z 3900 divided by two and that puts it in the correct place. And now when we rotate our catapult null, we're rotating the catapult in the correct way. That's what we need to do there. So that's all set up and ready to go. The next thing we need to do is worry about the plane. So we'll bring in a null and it's in exactly the same spot as our catapult null. Once again, we need to rotate this through 180 degrees around its heading so that it's facing in the opposite direction. And then what we can do is drop this down here and call it planes rot and we can drop all of our planes into it bring the glider back in and we'll think about positioning now before we do positioning another thing we need to do is probably bring in a second null drop this into planes rot again we can leave it so that it's well, it doesn't really matter. In actual fact, we could zero this out because it's position that we're interested. We're going to call this planes pause because that's what it's going to be, the position of our planes so that they're separate from the rotation. And then we can just drop these into there. The next thing to do with the glider is zero it out along the X axis and then probably zero it along the Z2 and then we can simply move our glider until it's just about where it needs to be, which is going to be somewhere there. So what we're going to actually be doing is using some, some espresso to pass the rotation of the catapult to the plane's rod. So that's fine. Moving on from here, then we need to zero out the dart and also the prototype. Let's just make the glider disappear. So with the dart selected, let's zero this out. And we'll just, again, as we did with the glider, just move it into position where we think it should be, which is somewhere about there as a starting point, somewhere like that. And make this one disappear, bring the prototype in and do the same again. Let's move that over there and up a little bit so that it's somewhere there. That's OK for a starting point. Right, let's hide the prototype again and bring the glider back in. 
And let's see what happens when we run the timeline, because obviously we've got dynamic dynamics on the glider and we've also got dynamics on the catapult. So let's see what happens. Oh, straight away, we've got a bit of an issue, haven't we? It's being forced out of the groove. Now, why would that be? Well, let's take a look at what we've got. So if we hit Command D, we can go into our bullet tag here, or into our bullet tab, and we can enable collisions, shapes, bounding boxes, contact points, connections. We, we only really want to see the, the actual collision shapes. So we'll make sure that we can see that. And then all we've got to do is this. And straight away, we can see where the collisions are actually taking place. So if we zoom in on the plane, we can see that there's a bit of an issue because we've got these diagonal lines coming down from the tips of the wings to the bottom of the fuselage of the plane. And that's where the problem is, because these are making contact with the catapult and forcing the plane upwards because, of course, they're colliding here with the actual catapult and they're, they're colliding in the wrong sort of way. And that's why our plane, if we go back to here, is being forced up upwards because these here are making contact and they're, they're just pushing the thing out. Now, what can we really do about this? Well, there's different approaches. I mean, we could change the actual shape here. We could change that certainly to say a moving mesh. And if we then move this, we can see that it doesn't happen because it's taken on the shape of the plane. But as we saw earlier, the, the, it does do funny things to the actual motion of the plane. So it's not the best option. So we'll put this back to convex hull. And what we'll actually do is substitute the catapult cube here. We'll, we'll substitute it with a different object that actually takes the uh, the shape that we're actually getting here into account. We'll actually make it work with that shape. So let's see if we can do that. We'll copy the cube, so command drag to copy. We'll make this cube disappear. And now we'll start working with our second cube. We'll actually make this behave in the way we want it to. Let's go into our front view, so F4. Go back to our zero point, and let's just see what we can do here. So with this cube, we can Let's have a look, see where we are. We go into our point mode. What we can do is select with visible only checked off. We'll select, let's just make this bigger, these two points and we will make them move away from the center. So if we get our scale tool and scale them in this direction, we can create a shape like that. Now let's just take away the dynamics for a second. We'll just switch this off. And if we do this, we can see the shape now. Let's have a look, see what we've got. OK, so we're still a little way off, aren't we? we what we need to really do is get a hold of these points and just drop them downwards. If we drop them down to, say, there, now we should be OK. It, it should actually be OK. So if we then go into here and enable this, go back to the beginning. Let's just change back to our 3D view. Let's just put this tag on this cube and see what happens now. And now it doesn't cause a problem. So we can then bring this cube back in and hit play and now everything is okay so let's just go command d once again and turn off the visualization and yeah we can see now that everything is okay so that's what, what i've done there and i think that's the best solution to this uh, rather than changing the actual collision shape of the plane i think i think you're better off doing this so that's all fine and every other plane should work as well. So they should all work perfectly well now. Okay, superb.
So let's think about where we're going to move on from here. Well, the next thing we need to do is actually create some user data that's going to allow us to change the angle of the catapult. And then we'll also create an espresso expression that will enable us to switch between the planes. And again, we'll need some user data for that. We'll need some radio buttons so that we can select the planes individually. And we'll use all of this data within the expression to get things working exactly the way we want them to. I'll bring in a null, rename it controller, and give it an espresso tag. And I'm going to save this one for later because the first this this is the, the first espresso tag, but this, there's going to be a second espresso tag which needs to be placed on the catapult, and that's the one we're going to be working on first. But we'll, before we get there, we'll do the user data for the controller. So in the controller, we can say add user data, and we'll add a group and call it catapult. And the data that we've got here will drop into there, and we'll also drag this away from this user data so that it overrides it. And this data will rename angle. It will be a float and it will need an interface which will be a float slider. Percentage will be degree. One degree steps, we will start from 15 degrees and go to 50 degrees and clamp these values. So that's all fine and, and working OK. We'll add another group. Once again, rename it, we'll call it planes. This group we can drop down here. So, the, so again, it's just below this catapult at the same level and, and the same level as the user data. And once again, we'll add some data. It's already in planes and we can call this plane. The, the, it will be actually an integer type. That will be the data type that we're interested in. And the, the interface will be radio buttons. We can say zero semicolon and we'll call this one glider. One semicolon dart. And finally, two semicolon prototype. And that sets those up. If we look at our details, we don't need to really worry about any of this. And in the example, we can see that this is what we're going to get. And that's exactly what we want. So we'll hit OK, and we can see that we've got our user data set up and ready to go. All looking very nice. OK, fantastic. So moving on from here, then we can work with our catapult here and we can open this up. Bring in our controller. Catapult angle. And that's fine. So we've got that. The next thing to do is bring in the catapult and we're interested in working with its rotation P. So rotation P, we want that at the input stage and we also want it at the output stage. So bring that into there. Great, that's all ready to go and we can plumb the angle into the rotation P and straight away it changes because we've set it to a minimum of 15 degrees. Now at the moment the plane is staying level that's the next thing we need to sort out. So we need to bring in planes rotation. And again, we're interested in working with the rotation P. So rotation P. And then we can plumb the output of our catapult into there. And we should, if we're OK, get what we want. Now let's have a look, see where we are. So we've got planes rotation. Let's see. So the planes rotation has changed. It is in the correct position, but at the moment, the actual plane's position is not. Now, that, I don't quite know why that is. It should be, but it, it's not quite in the right position. It hasn't moved the plane. It should, the plane should really be moving with it because it's taking its rotation from here. So let's just do a few checks and see what's going on. Let's have a look. So controller, see what happens when we move that. We're still not moving the planes. Are we moving planes rot? Yeah, planes rot is correct. Controller, that appears to be correct. Oh, forget controller, it doesn't matter. Catapult, yep, that's correct. Planes rot is correct. 
plane's position is rotated too. So why are the planes not rotated? That's very interesting. It's because we're on frame 28. If we go back to zero, it works. It's all fine and dandy. It works. So now when we get our controller and we move it, we can see that the plane reacts accordingly. OK, so if you are scrolling through the timeline, you will find that the plane won't move correctly. And that's likely to throw you just a little bit. Always make sure you start from zero when you're adjusting the angle of the catapult and you want the plane to follow. OK, that's great. That's fantastic. So that's all working. Moving on from here, then we can work with this next expression. And this is going to be the one that we're going to select the planes with. OK, that's going to be our next port of call. Another little piece of housekeeping that I will do is to make this dynamic cube disappear because we don't need to see that one now. We just want to see our dummy cube that makes our catapult. Brilliant. So let's just open the Expresso Editor once again and we'll start work on the next expression. And this one's going to be a little bit bigger than the last one. Once again, we'll work with the controller. Now, another thing I need to do actually is just another little bit of housekeeping here. I've got two more panels here, which I don't want, two more tabs. What I need to do, if we go into our user data, bring in another group and call this controls. Again, I'm going to drag it away from the user data and then I'm going to just put both of these in it. Just put those like that. Just put that one at the top and then hit OK. And now I've simply got controls and that's what I want. So everything is amalgamated into one. Fabulous. Let's carry on then. We'll bring in the controller. And we want from our controls plane. That's what we're going to be working with. The next thing we need are two conditions. We'll bring in one and they need three inputs. So we'll add another input to that one and then command drag to copy. So we've got those two in. Our plane is going to be the switcher. So we'll connect the output to the switches. And then moving on from here, we need basically some more conditions. In fact, we need another three, but we need some other elements as well. We'll bring in the three conditions first. So we'll bring in one. And these only need two inputs each. So we'll put one here, one here and one down the bottom. And just leave those set up like that. Now, what do we need in our first two conditions? Well, we need combinations of ones and zeros. Our first input in our top condition needs to be a zero. And our next two digits need to both be ones. In our bottom condition, we need a one in our first input, a zero in our second and a one in our third. OK, and you'll see what this is all about later. We'll go through it in depth. The next thing to bring in is a bool. So we'll bring one of those in and it needs to be an and in the function. That's what we're interested in. And we can connect the outputs from both of our conditions here to this bool. OK, so that's that set up. Moving on from here, this bool is going to control all of these conditions. So we can plumb this one into our switches like that. And that's ready to go. All set up. Don't need to do any more with those particular parts of this. But what we do need are a couple of knots. So in our adapters, or rather, uh, we need the actually from our bool menu, I beg your pardon, we need a knot. Bring in one of those, oops, just hit H so that we can see everything. Bring in one of those and command drag to copy once again. And these can be connected up like this. So that's those ready to go. And then moving on from here, we need the various elements that these things are actually going to control. So 
the knots are, are going to be important and we, and we actually need a third knot because we've got a, another one that's going to actually be connected here. So that's all set up and ready to go. And then it is literally just bringing in the various things that need to be controlled. So the first things to bring in really are the planes. We'll bring those in. We'll place the prototype down here because we're going to be controlling our, our prototype with what's going on down here. The dart will be controlled from what's going on here and the glider we can leave at the top. And what we're interested in here is switching these on and off. So it's their viewport visibility that we're particularly interested in. You can use the renderer visibility as well, but in our basic properties, we're interested in the viewport visibility. So we'll bring those in. And they're all set up. Right, so let's start making a few more connections. First of all, the glider. This will be controlled via this condition. So we can simply plumb the output of that into the glider's viewport visibility. And that will work perfectly well. That's that one taken care of. The dart here is going to be controlled by what's coming out of this condition. But this knot actually needs to be plumbed in to our first input. That needs to be plumbed into here. So well, into input two, actually, on the condition there. So that's got to go there. And then the output of our condition here can be plumbed into the bottom input there, so into input three. That's how we can set this up. And then the output of our condition can plumb into the dart. And straight away, we can see that the dart's been switched off or remaining is remaining switched off and the glider is switched on. But if we go into our controller and we select the dart, we can see the glider has now been switched off and the dart has been switched on. So we know that this outputs a value between 0 and 2. So 0, 1, 2. And we know that we've got a 0 in the first input, a 1 in the second input, and a 1 in the third input. So when we're producing a 0 here, the glider is going to be switched on. OK. But as soon as we produce a 1, that switches the glider off. It goes through this knot, so a 0 actually becomes a 1 and is passed to the dart, which switches the dart off. But as soon as we get the 1, the 1 becomes a 0 from the knot and is passed to the dart, which switches it on. That's how that's working. OK. Similarly, down here, we've got a situation that's exactly the same. So what we've got is a 1 first, then a 0, and then a 1. And of course, if we get two 1s, which we're going to get when we've selected our third aircraft, that means our first two aircraft are going to be switched off. And we're going to be selecting our prototype, which we're going to plumb in to this knot here. So let's see what happens now if we go to our controller and we select the prototype. At the moment, it's not quite working. OK, it's not quite working at the moment. And that's because we've got to set this condition up and we didn't. So we've got to say we want a one in the bottom. And now it's working. The prototype is doing its job. So this part of the expression is now working correctly. And we can work with our controller. We can select our glider. We can select our dart. We can select our prototype. And they're all working as they should, because the and is taking care of things and making the prototype work when the other two are switched off. OK, because we're going to get one at the output of both of these which means the output of this is going to be true. It means it's going to switch to this. We're going to get a one here. It goes through a knot. It becomes a zero. And our prototype is now visible. Similarly, we're also using the output of the AND to switch here, which means we're passing this input. And that's going to be a one. So that's going to come through here. It's going to pass to the dart. That's going to switch the dart off. And we're also passing a one directly out of here to the viewport of the glider, which is going to switch the glider off. And that's how this is all working. Right, well, we've not used this condition yet, but we're just about to. What we need to do here is think about the actual dynamics tags, because we need to switch those on and off at the correct times too. 
We'll bring in the gliders dynamics tag and we'll place that just here. We'll make sure that we can see it. Now what I'm going to do in actual fact is go into the basic tab here and just put G dynamics there so that we know what it is. Similarly here, D dynamics and finally P dynamics because it does get confusing if you're not careful. So what we're going to do is take the output of this condition and we're going to plumb it into the dynamics menu here enabled. That's what we're going to plumb that into. At the moment it's still off which is fine that's what it needs to be. So we've got that one in and that's ready to go. We'll bring the darts dynamics body in. Again dynamics enabled and this will be controlled by the output from this knot. So that will be plumbed in there. We also need to plumb the output of this knot into the bottom input of this condition. And the middle condition here, or the middle, well, rather, it's, it's input to, of course, of the condition. But this needs to take the output of our bottom condition here. So that's how those need to be set up. So we've got two dynamics bodies set up and ready to go. The next thing we need to do is bring in the prototypes. So we'll bring this one in. Again, this has got to be plumbed in somewhere and it's going to be plumbed in from this condition. We're going to take the output of here and we're going to plumb this into dynamics enabled and straight away it's switched on. OK, we can see that that's worked. So let's see what happens when we go through our controller. So we'll switch to the glider and again that's worked. That's perfectly good. Switch to the dart and that's perfectly good. So it's all working exactly as it should. And again, it's just using these combinations of noughts and ones from the knots and also from the output here. Uh, and that's all it is. It's as simple as that, really. It, it really is that simple. Because when you think about it, the dynamics enabled, they, they need to be receiving a one to be switched on. Whereas the viewports need to be receiving a, a zero. That's why we've got this combination of knots and various other things in here that we need. If they were both working with ones, we probably wouldn't need to worry about the knots so much, but they, they actually work in the opposite way. So that's why we're doing this. OK, so that's all set up. That is the expression. We don't actually have to do any more with the Espresso here. It's all set up and it's ready to go. So that's our switching system for our dynamics bodies and also our visibility for our planes, all completely set up and working as it needs to. Not quite as complex as it at first seems, but it's the way things are wired up and the various ways that things need to be plumbed into inputs. I mean, for example, this knot is plumbed into input two. This knot is input three of our second condition. So they're wired back to front. So our condition is wired into here. Our condition here is wired into this one. So, you know, there are a few sort of things that you need to worry about with this spaghetti that we've got going on here. But uh, it, it's not too bad once you actually understand the data flow and where the numbers are going and what they're doing at any given time. But anyway, that's got that expression all set up. So hopefully that's all makes sense. But anyway, let's move on from here and see what we can do next. The last step is to actually bring in another cube. We can drop this into our catapult, zero it out, or rather zero this out. And that's fine. Let's have a look, see where we are. It's not quite at the right angle, but that's OK. We can zero our 15 degrees out as well. And now it is in the correct plane and the correct angle. So from here, we can just change its size because this is going to be the object that's going to push the plane along the catapult. So let's resize this. If we make it in the X10, so look and see where we are. Let's just see from behind. Yeah, looks that looks good. 
but I would say that's going to work okay. So 10, and we'll make it smaller. We'll make it something like, let's have a look, 50. Well, yeah, I mean, we could go a little bit bigger than that. Let's go 80. Yeah, I mean, that's that's a good size. And then what we can do is make it smaller in its height. We want it about 50 probably in the height or something like that will be fine, I think, because it just, just needs to go just above the, the groove, somewhere around there. That looks good. OK, so that's ready to go. It's ready to push the plane along. The next thing we need to worry about is actually animating it. And it needs to travel more or less the entire length of the catapult. So what we'll do is decide how many frames we actually want it to animate over to push it from here to somewhere here. And that's going to be the next thing we need to worry about. I just want to run a quick check on the planes, so I'll go into my right hand view and we'll check these planes to make sure that they're in the correct positions. So let's go into the controller, switch to the dart. The dart's a little bit further away than it needs to be, so we can adjust its position. Just move it so that it's closer somewhere there and we can drop it down a little bit actually, drop it sort of down maybe to there. And then finally the prototype. So let's go back into our controller, select the prototype. And once again, it's a little bit further away than it needs to be. So let's just select that and move it back until it's somewhere around there. That should be fine. Or perhaps a little bit further forward. That should be fine. OK, so we've got those pretty much in the correct positions and ready to go. Switch back to the glider. And what we'll do with the cube is we'll record We'll record its positions where they are, just record all three of them. Move forward 30 frames, so we'll do this over one second. Move it until it's somewhere around there. It, it doesn't have to be exact. And then we'll simply record its positions again, and we should be fine. And let's just go back, and we can see that that's going to be working as it should. Yep, that's all set up correctly. So let's have a look and see what we get. And let's run a test on this and see if it actually does work. Um, let's come back a little bit further. Let's give this a go. Right, that's working. OK. So we also need to give this, of course, a dynamics tag because otherwise it won't push the plane. And this will need a copy of what we've got here. That should be fine. So we'll just command drag to copy that and let's see if this works. And look at that. It does. The plane's flying. We need a few more frames. So let's give ourselves a thousand frames just as a round figure. And let's see what we get now. And there it goes. Flying through the air beautifully. And then coming into well, it would be into land. We've got no floor there at the moment, but we'll put one of those in. That's good. Let's get a floor. You can, of course, use a flat plane if you so wish, but I'm going to use a floor because it will work perfectly well. And drop a dynamics tab on that. We'll put the dynamics tag on there and then make the floor disappear. Let's see what happens now. And there she goes, flying beautifully, coming down and landing perfectly. So that's all good. That's working as it should. Let's have a go with a different plane. Let's see if we can use the dart. And there she goes. Look at that. Beautiful. The way it hangs in the air is really impressive. It's because it's got so much wing area. And it flies a heck of a long way. Yeah, that's beautiful, that. OK, and then finally, we'll have a go with the prototype. So controller once again, prototype. Let's see what that does. And there you go. It's got a little bit of a stall in it, but we can adjust that if we need to. But it's flying and it lands perfectly. So there you go. We've got our first tutorial pretty much complete. And we've got our planes flying beautifully. We've got our catapult doing exactly what it needs to do. We can control that 
from here if we wish to change the angle of it and get our planes flying at a steeper angle if we want to do that we can just make that happen really easily and yeah they really do behave beautifully the aerodynamics work really well on this actually i'm very impressed with it it's, it's very very good but yeah so there you go that's the first part of this series complete and i really hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and that you've got a lot out of it and that uh, there's some things you can perhaps use in your own projects as always and it's perhaps inspired you to have a go at doing some bits and pieces with aerodynamics yourself maybe you can come up with some different designs for the actual planes i mean you know just see if you can see if you can come up with some really interesting wacky designs and see what you can build but uh, anyway that does bring part one of this series to a close so do tune in for part two if you're interested in the python as i said earlier there will be a real world example of using the try accept method uh, so if you're interested in that, please do tune in. But apart from that, if you have enjoyed this video, please give it a like. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel, leave a comment and of course, ring the bell. And wherever you happen to be on social media, then please, please do share this video because all this good stuff really does help keep the channel moving in the right direction. But anyway, that about wraps this one up. So I'll see you very soon in part two.